This is your FBI. This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. To your FBI, you look for national security. And to the Equitable Society for financial security. These two great institutions are dedicated to the protection of you, your home, and your country. Tonight, the story of a crime against society. Grand larceny. There's no such thing as a typically criminal face. A criminal can look like the most respectable citizen. Beneath the surface, he may be a counterfeiter or a pickpocket or a safecracker. But on the surface, on the physical surface you see, he may look like an accountant or a mechanic or a salesman. A few criminals have been smart enough to take advantage of this fact by leading double lives, by actually pretending to be a respectable citizen without anyone knowing differently. Neither the police, nor the community, nor even, in one case, the criminal's own wife. Dan, hmm? I hope you're going to finish that pudding. Oh, honey, I, I really don't have time. Oh, come on now. How about just a little more, hmm? Well, okay. <laughs> well, the way you try to fatten me up, I'll have to start going to a gym. Well, you need your calories, Dan, with all that night work you do. Pays dividends, honey. Pays dividends. Oh, I know. I ran into Mrs. McKinney downtown today, and she said her husband said you were the top salesman of the company. Is that what she said? Mm-hmm. Well, of course you know what we get if I top all sales for this month. No. What? A trip to Mexico, all expenses paid. Daniel. Yep. Hey, I'd better be getting underway. Oh, are you working again tonight? I've got a good prospect. I think I can land. Oh, Dan. I hate leaving you alone again, honey, but business is business. Oh, I don't mind that. I just don't like to see you work so hard. It pays dividends. Well, I wish there was some easier way of getting to Mexico. Honey, believe me, I'm getting us to Mexico the easiest way anybody could. Now, wait up. <laughs> Life, to his community, to the world, Daniel Hawley was a hard-working citizen. And he was a salesman, a good one, during the day. At night, however, Daniel Hawley was something else. On the evenings when he wasn't with his wife, when he wasn't busy being a model citizen, he was at work in a store or an office or a shop, at work in a building which had a safe. Where the devil you been? Well, I had a late dinner. Had a blanket? Of course. And the nitroglycerin. There. Well, this is going to be an easy job. Yeah. It will. I studied it very carefully the other afternoon. Very easy. I'm glad you think so. Here, take the blanket. I thought you were going to call me this afternoon. I didn't have time. It was a prospect I had to see. I don't say... Yeah, I think a small charge will be enough to blow this. I finally got tired of waiting, so I tried to call you. I thought I told you never to call unless it was absolutely necessary. Well, I didn't know whether you were going to show up tonight. I told you I was. Anyway, there was no answer. Oh, we've got a new number. Oh, that's great. I suppose all your prospects know it but me. Where am I going to call if I need to? Here. What's that? One of the company pencils. The number's on it. Okay. So if you think Come I'm... on, come on, come on. Get the charge set. We haven't got all night. No, and you got to be on the job bright and early in the morning. That's right. What's the percentage in it? A free trip to Mexico. Huh? You wouldn't understand even if I told you. No, I'm stupid. I only like to have one job at a time. 
Uh-huh. You finished setting that charge? Yeah. Okay, let's have the blanket. Yeah. There. All right, sir. Sure. Now, you know what you have to do right after the safe pops open. I know, I know. Okay, then. Stand back. There can't be a perfect crime because there isn't a perfect human being. Criminals, like the rest of us, make mistakes, but theirs are more costly. And that safe which Daniel Hawley cracked with jewels for military precision instruments belonging to the United States. They weren't worth much, but just by taking them, he made one small mistake. One very little mistake, which was the worst he could make. He violated a federal law and thereby challenged the FBI. Did you get all the evidence the sheriff had, Will? Yes, right down to fingerprints. Any good ones? Mm, not too good from this last job. But there were very clear ones from some of the others. Mm-hmm. They're being checked in the laboratory now. Say, how many jobs has this fellow pulled, anyway? Well, there's no way of knowing yet whether he was in on all of them. But in the last three years, there have been 14 burglaries in that district. All safe tracking? Yes, and all done in the same way. Come in. Oh, hello, Helen. Here's a teletype on those fingerprints. Fast work. Did you get anything? We sure did. Here's the file we have on the gentleman. Thanks, Helen. You're welcome. Well, seems he's an old hand at the game. Really? His record goes back to 1930. Between then and 1938, our friend was arrested four times. Mm. Petty larceny, attempted assault, burglary. What about after 38? Nothing. He got out of prison then and apparently has just disappeared. No record of his possible whereabouts. No. What's his name? Kaler. Joseph Kaler. Description? Yes. Five, ten and a half, heavy set, brown hair, brown eyes, no distinguishing marks. Just average looking. Yes, that's what he looked like in 1938, seven years ago. So about all we know is that he has a record. And the sheriff doesn't have any more on him either. Nice blind alley. Well, he made the mistake of leaving his fingerprints around. He made the mistake of violating a federal law. Maybe he's made another one we don't know about yet. Well, if he hasn't, maybe he will. No maybes about that. They always do. Five steps involved in the committing of a crime, then there are 5,000 mistakes the criminal can make. Some are even made after the crime is committed. Many criminals, for example, take a curious pleasure in walking by the doors of a police station and returning to the scene of the crime in deliberately courting danger. The most common mistake is that criminals cannot stop. If he gets away once, the professional criminal tries again, thinking he has learned more but not realizing that the more crimes he commits, the more chance he has of being caught. Because he is bound to make more mistakes. Daniel? Yes, dear? Are you very busy? Not too busy for you. What is it? Well, I've been trying to straighten out my accounts for the month. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, it's not what you think at all. The bank doesn't add right. No. The baking company doesn't. Hmm? They sent me this bill for $5.80, and we really owe them $9.80. Are you sure? Well, of course. I know what I bought. Well, then what's the trouble? Well, they're a big company, and if they can't get their bills... Laura, I... make out the check for $9.80. But, Dad... Honesty may not be its own reward, Daniel, but... I wasn't oh, real. Oh, dear, but for $4, you'd have it on your conscience. I'd have it on mine. It's not worth it, Laura. It's never worth it. You mean sooner or later they always find out? That isn't the point. Oh, I know, Dad. Anyway, they don't always find out. So it's just a question of your own honesty. Daniel, I'm making out the check for the right amount. That's my girl. Just a drop in the bucket. Hmm? What do you mean? Oh, that company does a wonderful business. Harriet's cousin told me. She works in the Ohio office, the one just across the river. Hmm? What'd she do there? Keeps books or something. 
But she said that at the end of every month, they always have at least nine or ten thousand dollars in the safe in that office alone. You don't say. Well, you can ask her yourself at the party tomorrow night. Huh? What? I, I said you'll see her tomorrow night at the party. Oh, uh, Laura, about that party, I, I don't think now, I... Now, Dan, <laughs> I thought you said definitely you wouldn't have to work tomorrow night. Oh, but honey, there's that trip to Mexico, you know. Oh, Dan, you say... I it's... know, dear, I'm very sorry, but... I just heard of a prospect, a particularly good one. You ready, Jenny? Yeah. Okay, stand back. Nice to meet you, huh? Nice and deep. Not bad. I, mean, I hope there's as much dough inside that safe as you think. Hmm, why shouldn't there be? Baking company? Well, there's only one sure way to find out, and that's but. Well, how do you like that? What? Look, got a small safe inside the big one. You sure cased this job, didn't you? Shut up. Well, come on, let's put the blanket over the little one. There isn't close. time. What? There isn't time. The watchman will be back again in his round. What are we going to do, chuck it up to experience? Shut up, let me think. Why are you thinking? I hope you don't mind if I just... Hey, wait, come on. Where? Help me lift the little safe out. We can't carry that out of the building. First place is too heavy, and then the second we place... We can carry it ten yards, can't we? What if we can't... There's an elevator over there that'll take us right down to the basement. Then what? The basement's really a loading platform. The company keeps its delivery trucks down there. We put the safe in the truck. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, not so heavy... Heavy enough. All right, this way. You know how to work the elevator? Sure, sure. All right. Set her down. Easy. Easy there. There. Now, shine your flash. What for? So I can find the starter for this. Oh. Here you are. I hope that watchman's hard of hearing. Hope he's on the other side of the building. Thought you said he was. That's where he's supposed to be. Let's try. Shh. Hmm? Okay. Let's pick her up and dump her on the back of this one. There. Lifting wallets is a lot easier on the back. Yes, but there's a lot less in them, too. Hmm. All right. I'll set her down. Easy. 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 Gonna drive? Sure. All right, slide in. Dan. What? Ignition key. What? Where are the ignition keys? How are you gonna start this thing? Well, they always leave them in the truck somewhere. But where? They're usually on the little ledge under the What? Yeah. Shining his light around. Shut up. Where are those keys? Will you shut up? And suppose. All right, got him. Now. Hold on tight, because the minute he turns, I'm going to move fast. Just start it. You ready? Danny's shining the light on the elevator. It's too late now. Who's there? Go oh, well, of all. Who's there? Choke it, choke it. Who's Shut in up. that truck? Come on, come on. Come Get out of that truck, dog. out of this alley. We're in the clear. Keep your eye out, Johnny, and you... Johnny. What do you know? He's got you. Well, I'm sorry, friend, but there's no room for excess baggage on this trip, so... Out you go! of the small safe out here, and then carried it over there to the elevator. Sure. Anything yet on the one who was found, Tom? No, except he wasn't the one we were looking for. The description doesn't tell it. Maybe his partner is the one we're looking for, either. Well, he left fingerprints all over the steering wheel of the truck and all over the small safe. We'll know soon enough if 
They match the others. Even if they don't, he's a case for us. What do you mean? Well, we drove a stolen truck across the river and over the state line. Did you find anything on the body of the other one? No, just the usual things. Keys, wallet, a pencil from some company, a bar of candy, and of course his gun. Nothing to get us a lead. Mm, nothing that looks too good. Well, they did a neat job on this face. Well, they had enough practice. I wonder where they got the metric listing. Probably homemade. You know, Harvey. I knew it. I knew sooner or later our little friend would make a mistake. What have you got there? You know how these boys always cover a safe with a blanket when they crank it? Sure. Well, here's a piece of that blanket. This time, Mr. Taylor, or whatever he calls himself, left his visiting card. <laughs> Momentarily close the Federal Bureau of Investigation file on Daniel Hawley, thief. We'll return to this case in just a moment. If you believe in democracy, then you believe in life insurance. They go together. First, let's consider the typical owner of life insurance. A man who says to himself, look, I believe in taking care of myself. If I die, nobody else will have to look out for my family. When I get old, nobody else will have to support me. Men of that breed, right thinking, independence, self-reliance, make democracy work. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, a mutual organization, is dedicated to cooperation with such men, to help them make democracy work. The Equitable is owned by its members, that is to say, by its 3,200,000 policyholders. And all the society's funds are put to work for the benefit of all its members. Finally, remember that these equitable funds are so invested that they promote the system of free enterprise on which our democratic economy rests. And so by serving its members, the equitable serves America. Now, back to the file on Daniel Hawley. Peace. <laughs> Crimes which would have been left unsolved years ago can be solved today and solved quickly for one reason, laboratory work. That's why the FBI has built up its own laboratory until it is now the best in the world. Years ago, a small piece of a blanket would not have been a clue. But in the Harley case, it was the lead the special agents had been waiting for. They sent the piece of cloth immediately to the laboratory and had it analyzed. It had the texture, the weaving, the thickness, the dye... Every conceivable element in that piece of blanket analyzed until they found who manufactured it. From the manufacturer, they found in what areas that type blanket was sold. They kept narrowing down the hunt until at last they found the only store in the vicinity of the burglaries which had that blanket for sale. Oh, uh, we don't have that blanket anymore. It's wool, you know. Wool blankets are hard to get these days. How long has it been since you've had it in stock? Oh, two years now. Maybe even more. And I guess you wouldn't remember who you sold it to. No, but I could find out. You could? Sure. That was a pretty fine blanket, you know. When they came in, I called all my charge customers and said, grab them while you can. Did they all buy blankets? No, sir. I didn't have enough to go around. My one customer alone bought half a dozen. Who was that? Well, I couldn't tell, except it was one of the charge customers. How many charge customers did you have then? Oh, several dozen. I see. Do you have a list of who they were? Sure. But, uh, are you going to pick out the one you're looking for? We'll pick him out. There's 34 names. I know. But I think we'll pick out the right one. Uh, 36 names, actually, Well, I know. It'll take quite a while to check all of them. Yes, I was thinking about that. Of course, we have his description. Or a description of him seven years ago. And probably over a dozen men on that list could fit it. Let me see it again. Sure. Benton, Rocky, Andy, Green, Paul. That name. 
What about him? I've seen it someplace before. It's not a very unusual man. No, but I've seen it someplace. Yeah. But I'm trying to remember. Holly. Oh, that name was in the local paper this morning. The salesman named Dan Holly won a contest. Yeah, I saw it too. He worked for. Wait a minute. Have you still got the stuff that was found on the other man's body? Sure. Right here in the drawer. The pencil. Right. Here it is. Killer's product. That's who that salesman worked for. Daniel Hawley. Alias Joe Keeler. Oh, we can't be sure. Mm, it's too much of a coincidence. We still can't be sure. I know, but we've got Keeler's fingerprints. They match the prints on the steering wheel of that truck. And if Hawley's match... Well, suppose we visit Mr. Hawley and see if we can get his prints. <laughs> down, gentlemen. Mrs. Hawley's upstairs, but I can get her down and go oh, home. quite all right. There's no need to bother her. How about a drink? No, thank you. You sure? Uh, no, thanks. We're really here to ask you a few questions, Mr. Hawley, if you care to answer them. Why, I'd be delighted to, sir. I'd be delighted. How long have you lived here? Well, let me see now. Almost six years, I think. And before that? Before that, I was in New England. Where? Oh, over. I was a salesman there, too. Once a salesman, always a salesman, I guess. <laughs> Pretty cold up there, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I was glad to get back here. I have an aunt up there now. She's just freezing, she says. Can't get enough blankets. Well, I don't wonder. It's hard to get now. Yes, sir. Are you one of those lucky people who stocked up while you could still get blankets, Mr. Hawley? Well, frankly, gentlemen, I have to admit I did buy a couple. Blue wool, weren't they? Yes, as a matter of fact, I believe they were. Do you think we could see them? Oh, I'm afraid not, Mrs. Hawley's got them all packed away in moth balls for the summer, and <laughs> you know how women are. Yeah. I understand you're a top salesman over at Killis for this area, Mr. Hawley. Well, hard work and lots of luck will always do it, I say. Mainly luck. <laughs> do you have any cards, or do you always give out pencils like this? Here, is that one of my pencils? Here. Oh, yes, sure it is. Do you mind if I hang on to it? No, not at all, sir. Pleasure. Here. Thanks. May I ask where you got that pencil, sir? We found it on the body of a safe cracker who was shot. What? You don't say. Yes. Well, well, those pencils sure keep bad company, don't they? They certainly do. Well, I think we'll be getting along, Mr. Hawley. Ah, I'm sorry. I couldn't be more happy. Goodbye, Mr. Hawley, and thanks for the pencil. Not at all, gentlemen. Goodbye. just left. I saw them from my window, and I said to myself, Laura, that's just going to mean more work for Daniel. Well, that's pretty nice work, honey. What do you mean? They just came to talk to me about my winning that trip to Mexico. I've got to go to the New York office first to go to some kind of official ceremony. Well, it seems awfully funny to have to go to Mexico by way of New York, but as long as you're going to get there. Oh, I'm going to get there, honey. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> The FBI never makes an arrest until it is sure of its facts. But at the same time, a suspected criminal is never left unwatched, is never left free to disappear before absolute proof can be obtained. Daniel Hawley knew he had left his fingerprints on his own pencil. He knew those prints would be matched with those he left on the steering wheel of the stolen truck. He knew the FBI would soon have absolute proof. And so he packed his bag, got in his car, and drove to the town railroad depot. When's the next train? Why, hello, Mr. Hawley. Hello. Uh, when's the next train? There's one due in right now. Let me have a ticket. A ticket? Yes. <laughs> Don't you care where she's bound for? What? 
Oh, of course, of course. But well, maybe you won't want to take her. Well, where is it bound for? Uh, let me see now. Uh, uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, New Orleans. Well, that's fine. Fine. Uh, just where you're going, eh? Yes, yes, yes. Let me have a ticket. Well, now, ain't that a piece of luck? Look, now. will you let me have a ticket or I won't make the train? Yes. I'm getting it as fast as I can. Hey, you sure are upset today, Mr. Hawley. Don't worry, that's all. I'm just in a hurry. Well, here's the ticket. That'll be... Don't worry. Keep the change. Yeah, well, Mr. Hawley, don't you want the balance of the change here? Take your bag. No, no, that's all right. I'll handle it by... Mr. Yes? Going someplace, Mr. Kaler? Well, I... Or should I say Hawley? You better get aboard, sir. We'll pull it out. He's changed his mind. Yes, I don't think I'll be going after all. of us, criminals make mistakes, only theirs are more costly. One small mistake can mean years in prison. But the worst mistake a criminal can make is to violate a federal law. Because when that happens, he finds himself up against the very thing that all criminals try to avoid, the FBI. Criminals don't try to stay clear of the FBI, don't try to avoid any encounter with it merely for melodramatic reasons. They have one simple practical they know that sooner or later they will be caught by the FBI. And once caught, they will be convicted. You'll hear about the file on next week's case in just a moment. In this, the opening week of the seventh war loan drive, I should like to read an important message from Thomas I. Parkinson, president of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And I quote, In every war loan drive, America has never failed to go over the top. And one factor in this unbroken record of success is heavy bond buying by life insurance companies. In both the fifth and sixth war loan drives, the equitable subscription was larger than that of any other life insurance company. Larger, in fact, than any other single subscription of any kind. In the present drive, the equitable will again be one of the leading subscribers. In addition, funds of this society are heavily invested in the great industries that have broken records manufacturing weapons of war and in the railroads that have done such a tremendous job of wartime transportation. And that is why we say that in wartime, equitable dollars are fighting dollars. And at all times, they are security dollars. For you, your home, and your country. Next week, a crime against our war effort. Draft dodges. The incident used in tonight's broadcast is taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and directed by Van Cleve, the author was Lawrence MacArthur, and your narrator was Frank Lovejoy. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time for this is your FBI. of the American Broadcasting Company.